When I was growing up, I remember the smart car was a bit of a phenomenon because you could park it pretty much anywhere you wish. It was a very small, compact vehicle. For those people who live in a busy city like myself in London, it made it ideal for finding the right parking spot, which is somewhat of a luxury. Now we've updated in modern times and we're going with electric vehicles. And here is the Smart EQ 4.2. It's available in a two-door or four-door format if you go for the 4.4. So just worth bearing that in mind. And it comes with a, a rooftop as well via the Cabriolet. Now the model we've got over here is the 4.2 and it's the Blue Dawn edition. Uh, this model can be found for around 23 to 24,000 pounds. However, prices for this model starts from around 19,000 pounds. Now in this review, we're gonna be comparing it to the likes of the VW e-up, the Seat Me Electric, the Fiat 500 Electric as well, and seeing if it's actually worth its money because its competitors come in at roughly the same price tag. Now if you want a detailed breakdown of the different trim levels of the Smart EQ 4.2, definitely do check out our written review, will be down in the description below. Now before proceeding with this independent review, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification. It'll allow you to keep up with the latest reviews from Totally EV. So to kick things off, we're gonna talk about its exterior design and first off I should talk about its size because this is one of its major selling points of course for those people who are considering this car in the first place. Now it does have its disadvantages where you've got limited boot space and limited capacity within the cabin but in terms of its advantages is the fact that it's very easy to drive and we'll talk about driving later down in this review. Now in terms of a design standpoint of view in comparison to the first generation model it's slightly larger. It's 195 millimeters longer, it's got a 60 three millimeter longer wheelbase and it's 153 millimeters wider and 55 millimeters taller. Not exactly massive differences but small differences that you might be wondering about specifically if you were accustomed to the smart car like I was in the late 90s. The thing I should get off my chest is the Brabus styling. Now I have no issues with the styling point of view. It looks a bit sporty, it looks quite nice but in my head Brabus was was a company that produced high performance vehicles, be it you know petrol or hybrid vehicles and all that stuff. But instead over here, you're looking at a stylistic point of view. It's just, you know, got flared bumpers and different alloys and slightly different gear knobs within the, within the cabin. But other than that, you're talking about minimal differences. So if you don't really care about that sporty look or you don't want that kind of Brabus look to it, and I use that word very loosely, then you should just consider its cheaper alternative, which is around one to two thousand pounds cheaper instead, and therefore look at the baseline trim instead. And of course, there's a few differences as well, but fundamentally, in terms of power output, battery capacity, which are the big things when it comes to electric vehicles, or indeed just any vehicle in terms of power, then the Smart EQ42 Blue Dawn Edition is no different from the baseline trim. Now, moving on from that, we should talk about its interior design, and I should say that getting in and out of the vehicle is very easy and that's because you've got pretty wide opening doors which took me by surprise. The doors themselves are pretty large and therefore open up quite wide and makes it very well seamless to get in and out of the car. Likewise, in terms of practicality, Smart have integrated Android Auto and Apple CarPlay via the eight inch infotainment system, which is also a touchscreen display. It's plenty vivid, and while the resolution could be a little bit improved, it basically does the job. Now to connect up to the infotainment system, there are two USB ports found by the center console, and this also sits next to a 3.5 millimeter jack auxiliary cable as well, if, for example, you have an iPod touch, for example. Now there is also a 12 volt socket found underneath the center armrest, and that is for you to plug in, let's say, a dash cam. And if you want a favorite of our dash cams, then do check it out in the description below where we list out some of the best out there on the market. And furthermore, allows you to, let's say, charge an external device as well. Now the center armrest can be retracted. So therefore, if you don't want it, you don't have to use it. And of course you can bring it down for your convenience as well. Now elsewhere in terms of convenience and in terms of design, there is a non-slip pad found underneath the physical handbrake. And this is very very ideal for placing a large size smartphone. In my case, I have a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. It fits perfectly over here. However, it should be considered that when you do plug it in, such as a large size smartphone like the one I have, it means it's gonna be kind of diagonally wedged. And there's no QI wireless charging pad over here, which is slightly a shame and I think a slight mistrick by smart. 
Now, moving on to the driver position, I have no issues in terms of comfort, and we'll talk about that just very shortly, but the instrument cluster is semi-digitalized. You've got a small three-inch display which shows digital information, as you might expect, such as range or, let's say, your speed, and, of course, you have got a physical dial which shows your speed. Now, there is also a little gauge found on the right-hand side, at least for those of us who live in the UK, on the right-hand side, I think it'll be the opposite if you live in, let's say, Germany, and here you've got a power indicator, in other words, how much power you are drawing from the battery, or indeed how much battery you are charging via regenerative braking, and there is also a battery indicator in t telling you how much charge you have remaining, other than what you can see via your instrument cluster too. Now on the subject of technology, I should also mention that the Smart EQ42 has a two-speaker audio system, and both of which can be found within the doors. Now, if you want a detailed review of the audio system, do check it up on your pop-up banner. But what I will say in a nutshell is that it's unsurprisingly not that impressive, specifically in comparison to some of its competitors, those of which offer just more drivers around the cabin and give you a little bit more of a fulfilling audio experience. Now, aside from the technology found within the cabin, of course, another important factor is boot capacity. And here you've got 260 litres to play around with, which should suffice for, let's say, small weekly shops. As for the boot, it operates in two separate ways. It's manually opened and manually closed and then you've got a little compartment over here and if you're quite clever in terms of how you position the charging cable you can place a singular charging cable in this segment as well which can be quite handy. Now you do have two charging cable bags as well to make it a little bit easier if you want to use that. Now what I quite like is the fact that the the boot lid cover can be removed so you don't have to have that there at all if you don't want in other words not to segregate the boot and the front of the cabin and you can also bring down the front passenger seat in other words to transport elongated goods. Of course that is if you're going to be a single occupant in the car. Now elsewhere when it comes to storage I really like the fact that Smart have integrated a retaining strap on the passenger seat and therefore it allows you to transport let's say a singular bag without having to worry about it flailing around or equally having to use some of the boot space. Of course that is if you don't have another occupant or you're not transporting elongated goods. Elsewhere you've got the cup holders which are found within the center console and then you've got the door bins which are large enough to fit a 500 milliliter bottle alongside a large size purse or wallet. There is, of course, the glove compartment, but given the size of the vehicle, this is quite limited in terms of space. So if you're coming from a regular hatchback, just expect it not to be as large as you might be accustomed to. Now, transitioning back inside the vehicle, I should point out that this will only seat two people. It might be pretty obvious, but including you as a driver. Let's talk about seat comforts. Now, the seats themselves are a little bit firm and a little bit surprising in my opinion, but I had no problems in terms of lower back pain or anything like that on my commutes and tests. The headrests are non-adjustable, and that's a viewer that pointed out in my test Model 3 review, so do check it out up in the pop up banner above. But it just should be kind of um, highlighted that's not the case in the Smart EQ, you can't adjust the headrest. Also, the seats themselves can be brought forwards and backwards, both of them that is, and both of them also have the seat heaters as well, which is integrated. Now, another thing you should know is that the driver's seat can be propped up and down. And for me, I have a perfect driving position. I like to see it a little bit closer to the wheel and allows me to peer over to the, towards the bonnet, and I have no problems whatsoever. I'm just under six foot. Likewise, when it comes to headroom and legroom, it's plentiful. And also the sunroof over here brings in some nice extra light. I think that's an additional option in terms of the spec models that you go for, but something that you might want to consider. And it also has a retractable sunshade if you don't want to use it. In terms of visibility, it's fantastic. Of course, it's a very small compact car. So when you look around 360 degrees within the cabin, you can pretty much see all your surroundings. And here you've got a very wide windscreen. You've got big windows and those big doors that I talked about before and of course you got the rear window as well which is just flat and easy to look through so therefore peering over your shoulder when you're doing parking maneuver or let's say three-point turn is very easy and just to make life just all that bit simpler smart have even integrated a rear view camera and rear parking sensors as standard which is a nice addition in my opinion right so on the subject of comfort of course let's talk about driving comfort and the first thing I'd have to talk about is the cabin noise now here there is a bit of cabin noise that does creep in from the tires and of course that can depend in terms of the model you go for 
but it's well quite a small cabin that's not that well insulated and as a result you can kind of hear this kind of reverb I'm not really sure if my microphone will be picking it up properly but it's something I definitely did notice specifically when you're going at greater speeds unlike now when we're driving through the city now on that notion I should also mention that the suspension is relatively stiff which is quite surprising I mean we've got a mini Cooper S right in front of us I think it's the electrified version but um, very much like the mini in front of us it has a quite stiff suspension setup which means that you get very little body roll when you're going at speed on the country roads however when you're going over speed bumps on in the city or going over a bit more well looser terrain then you can feel the road and of course due to that cabin noise as well you can also hear the roads that you're on as well however there is one major selling point for the smart eq42 or any smart car should i say very much like the toyota igo which is in front of us which again quite ironic i really don't script this but anyway random cars on the road hopefully those motorists won't mind me referencing their vehicles but one of the key selling points here is the fact that the car is extremely fun to drive it does really feel like a go-kart it you're very connected with the road in front of you not only due to the seating height and due to its small compact form factor but also due to its turning circle which is very at 6.95 meters which is ridiculously easy to do let's say a three-point turn without actually having to do a three-point turn rather doing a full well not what, 180 degrees or 360 degrees if you wanted to do it that way but anyway what I'm trying to say over here is just it's very fun to drive now when you're going at slower speeds it also feels quite nippy due to its relatively light body and its size yet again and due to its electric motor which outputs around 60 kilowatts of power which equates to around 82 horsepower you do feel instant amount of acceleration and you do have this kind of sporty-ish feel however if you're going to be going off the well if you're going off the the, the lights and you want to challenge someone to a 0 to 60 test well don't expect to win this race at least in most scenarios because the car has a twisted 0 to 60 time of 10.15 seconds which is perfectly fine but not exactly as nippy as some of its rivals or indeed some other petrol based vehicles out there on the market. Now given we're going at snail pace through Putney right now I should mention ironically it's top speed which is limited to 81 miles an hour. This should suffice for going around city and also going on the motorway it's not like the Citroen Ami which is limited to 28 miles an hour so therefore if you're going to go on some a road at 40 or 50 miles an hour you're not going to have a problem with this car as for total torque it's limited to 160 newton meters of torque which is readily available because we're talking about an electric vehicle and that again should suffice when you're driving around the city but it's not going to really set your world alight when you're going on the motorway or at higher speeds now of course the most important factor when it comes to driving an electric electric vehicle is range and specifically when it comes to range anxiety now granted this is a city based car but here you should be mindful that due to the size of the smart EQ42 it means that well you are limited to 17.2 kilowatt hours and as a result that's pretty much half that of the VW e-up and the Seat Me electric and is still smaller than the likes of the Fiat 500 electric as in the base level trim now here the manufacturer claims that you'll get around 80 to 82 miles on the WLTP cycle and surprisingly I got around 72 to 75 miles from my tests which is perfectly fine so in terms of quotation and from what the manufacturer claim you're going to be achieving near that figure but is 70 miles enough for you that is the question for me in my tests it pretty much exhausted the entire battery and when I went and did my shopping at Tesco's I ended up plugging it into a pod point charger which was a 22 kilowatt charger by the way and meant that I regained some energy for free which was great however it, the thing you should consider is that it is a city car it is really marketed as a city car and there's no doubt about it it's not made for those long distance commutes but it does beg the question at what point Point, are you sacrificing your well battery range for the well form factor of the vehicle personally if it was me I would see myself getting a VW e up a Fiat 500 electric or a Seat Me electric which all come around the same price point and instead these vehicles offer up to 140 if not 160 miles of range depending on how you drive 
and as a result put this car to shame. And of course you've got the likes of the Corsa E and you've got the Honda E which achieve around 90 to 100 miles and they're similarly not that impressive and are vehicles I wouldn't recommend myself either but it's a bit of a hard one with this one. I, ultimately what I'm trying to say is that it's got a short electric range, don't expect it to blow your mind in this respect and you are very much limited in terms of the overall capacity because of the size of the car. Is that good enough for you? Let me know in the comments below. Now to recoup energy back into the battery pack, you can of course use regenerative braking. All electric vehicles on the market offer some degree of regenerative braking and here the smart EQ42 is no different. Although the level of regenerative braking isn't as high as I would expect, in other words not as harsh, you can't quite do a one pedal driving approach like you do on the Nissan Leaf for example, or the Volvo XC40 Recharge Twin, the Polestar 2, the, the Tesla Model 3, and to a limit the VW ID3. I just would have liked it to be a little bit harsher. Now the harshness can be adjusted, you've got effectively two modes, you've got eco mode which can be enabled via a button on the center console and this gives you a little bit of extra regenerative braking. You can disable eco mode and at which point you are no, you're more likely to be coasting but you're still recouping a little bit of energy when you lift off and of course you can disable it all together so to speak because you can disable the smart regenerative braking via radar assist via the instrument cluster and that effectively scans the car in front of you and tries to judge the distance in front and therefore when you do lift off it will note that there's a object in front and therefore it's going to try and break the vehicle a little bit more and again you can disable that if you don't want that enabled. Now other than regenerative braking you can of course plug in the vehicle and there is a port found where you'd normally find let's say the fuel filler in terms of towards the back of the vehicle. Now here you've got a type 2 port only and therefore you've got no rapid charging so you can't have a 50 or 100 kilowatt charge. Instead you're limited to 22 kilowatts of input and as a result it means that if you do plug in via 22 kilowatt input like I did via the Podpoint charger at Tesco's I found that you can recoup energy at a rapid rate and here it's quoted to go from 10 to 80 percent in around 40 minutes which should suffice for a lot of individuals. If however you don't have access to a more rapid charger and you have access to a regular 7 kilowatt wall box charger or ones that you'd find out there um, on the public chargers it will take roughly 3 hours and 15 minutes to achieve the same sort of charge. Plug it into a 3 pin socket however and this figure will drastically increase but I suspect most people will get a wall box charger if they buy an electric car or will be utilizing a public 7 kilowatt input if they have it at their disposal. Now finally I should mention in terms of safety. Now as far as I'm aware this vehicle hasn't been tested by Euro NCAP so I can't quite quote a figure rating or how it's done. One can imagine that due to the vehicle being a little bit smaller than the other vehicles out there on the market it's got a little bit less of a crumple zone but I think the notion of it being unsafe if you're in a serious accident or in a light accident as well isn't too bad it's actually quite got a rigid structure at least from back in yesteryear that was the case and the original smart cars were tested to the nth degree I think even dropped off from cranes and stuff just for the sake of videos but anyway all I'm trying to say over here is that I can't really att attest for that but what I can say is about the driver assistance systems now here you do have a basic cruise control which is to me well fine it works and does the job However, one would have potentially um, expected a adaptive cruise control specifically at this price point or for example something that has active lane assist and I'm just going to get away from this ambulance which is going to come so I'm just going to pop over here showing the nimbleness of the Smart EQ completely getting out of the way of the vehicle which is great. There you go, ambulance going and doing its job. Keep on going guys, you're doing a great job. Um, and um, yeah, so when it comes to safety assistance systems, um, it's pretty basic. You've got the cruise control and, and you've got emergency, ironically emergency with the ambulance coming through, emergency brake assist, front collision assist, and that's about it. And I did mention before about the rear view camera and the rear parking sensor, which add to the overall safety of the vehicle, but not when you're on the road. Other than that, you've got no lane keep assistance, blind spot assistance, rear cross traffic alert, um, 
it's pretty basic and unfortunately there's no way of even adding to the safety systems that come with the smart eq42 and i would have potentially liked a little bit more specifically given some of its competitors so for example the fiat 500 electric offer a level 2 autonomous driving even and their la prima model so i was just anticipating a little bit more and potentially i'm expecting a bit too much from this small compact vehicle but nevertheless it's just something i thought i should point out in this review and so this all leads me on to my verdict what do i make about the Smart EQ42. Well, quite frankly, it's quite a stylish vehicle. No matter which trim level you go for, it's quite affordable in the grand scheme of things of electric vehicles, and it's really fun and very easy to park, very much like its predecessors have been. However, the key point to bear in mind here is that you're limited on boot space and you're pretty much going to be aware of that if you're coming to a smart car. However, for an electric vehicle, the big sticking point for a lot of people transitioning to a fully electric vehicle for the first time is range. And here, the vehicle does suffer from a small battery pack given its small size. And as a result, you are going to be limited in terms of how far you can drive. Now you might be those type of person that is going to be living in around the city, is only going to be doing certain miles a day or a week, and as a result it's 70 to 80 mile odd range is going to be perfectly sufficient for you. However, for most individuals, at least in my opinion, you should probably consider the Seat Me Electric, the VW E Up, or the Fiat 500 Electric, which all three of these vehicles offer a more practical design. They offer a far greater range at roughly 140 odd miles, and they also have their unique set of features as well, such as driver assistance systems or even a bit more technology integration. So those would be my suggestions, but of course you might agree or disagree with me, so do let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you own the Smart EQ42 or were thinking of it, do let me know in terms of where your decision is or why did you go for this vehicle. I'd be just intrigued to hear your thoughts and of course for other people viewing this video. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe and hit that bell notification as it's very much appreciated. I've been Chris from Toasted EV. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.